Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas. And this is the Prophetic Word Program. If you would get you a pencil and paper and uh, and just jot down the scriptures that I give you here and study them later in the quietness of your own home, you will see why we're having so much trouble with the wars, the fightings, the shootings. Uh, it's all shown in the Holy Scriptures and it's shown to be the greatest in this generation. Yes, the Savior actually uh, uh, prophesied this generation, starting with the nuclear bomb. Uh, yes, we, ha we had no nuclear bombs. We had no jet airplanes or rockets or, uh, you know, uh, uh, so many things have developed in this uh, time period. The prophet Daniel said, I'll give you that scripture if you'll get you a pencil and paper and write it down. But the prophet Daniel said in Daniel 12, 4, he said the, the, uh, that knowledge would be increased in this, in this time period, and it'd be a great time of trouble such as never was before. Then the Savior said that the sun would be darkened in this generation. Yes, the sun would be darkened. Uh, you know, that takes nuclear burning, and they, and they, uh, the experts are telling us, yes, the sun is going to be darkened when we have the nuclear wars and the moon will not give her light. Well, this shows you the time period of it. The, the knowledge increase started with the computer in 1934 was the start of it. That was a, a means of storing great amounts of knowledge and being able to draw on it. Uh, uh, you know, it's like the subconscious mind, uh, only we can't uh, use the subconscious mind at this time, but it's storing all the knowledge that we take in. We don't even know it, you know. But uh, the computer does uh, the same, uh, and it, uh, uh, you, we can draw that uh, knowledge up and, and use it. Well, what they did with this great knowledge, of course, uh, was was um, uh, build rockets to carry the great nuclear bombs that they built. Well, all of this was prophesied. The sun is going to be darkened in this generation, and the Savior uses that word in Matthew 24, if you have a King James Version. Uh, if you have a book of Yahweh, it's Matitya 24. Uh, they took out the name Yahweh out of the word Matitya and translated it, Matthews, or rendered it Matthews. You can't translate a name. Anyway, the the time that the nuclear bomb was actually started, patented, was uh, they turned in a patent on it, was in 1934. Well, that started this generation that the Savior spoke of in Matthew 24. Uh, the sun would be darkened. It takes a nuclear bomb. So that is the start of this generation, as the Savior showed, 1934. So we're at the end of this tribulation, I mean the end of this generation. Uh, if you have a pencil and paper, Daniel 12, mark that down, 12, 4. He gives the, he gives the knowledge increase uh, at that time and the great time of war, great time of trouble, uh, and, and of course the Savior gives the nuclear bombs and then Revelations, the 18th chapter, shows you a great nuclear burning and then the Savior shows you who is going to actually be protected in that time period and have eternal life, be given eternal life if you do a certain thing, he says. In Revelations 12 verse 9, the Savior said the whole world is deceived, deceived by Satan. The whole world. Now, he also said in Luke 24, verse 25, he said, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Well, of course, Revelations is the last 
prophecy given to mankind. That was written in 96 A.Y. A.Y., that's after Yahshua. Uh, they also took out the name of the Savior out of your Bible, the camp, out of the versions. They didn't take it out of the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh, Isaiah 34, 16, it says, Search out the book of Yahweh and read. Not one of these things will be neglected. Not one of these prophecies. In Revelations 12, verse 9, he shows the deception that is going on in the world today. And that's what I want to show you because... Uh, he says you've got to believe these, and if you don't believe what the prophets have spoken, then and, and the, the book of Yahweh, if you don't believe it, then you will be deceived. Revelations 12, 9, Satan deceives the whole world. Now, he said, in the last days I will establish my house. The last days is the last generation. The Savior calls it this generation. I will establish my house. Why wasn't his house here before? Well, it, it was, but it was destroyed. And Yahweh allowed it to be destroyed. He allowed Abel, the righteous priest, to be murdered. Then he, uh, he this is mankind. He allowed mankind to do whatever he wanted to do. And, of course, he told them in advance, this is what your way is going to bring to you. Well, Luke says, Luke 24, 25, you're a fool if you don't believe all of this. Matthew 4 and verse 4. Matthew 4, verse 4. The Savior said, you don't live but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh and written in, search out the book of Yahweh and read. Isaiah thirty-four sixteen. Search out the book of Yahweh. Well, they changed that. They took the name Yahweh out of the versions, such as the King James Version, and they, uh, they replaced it in these translations with the words Lord or God. So Isaiah 34 in the King James Version would say, search out the book of the Lord and read. Lord, the word Lord. I'll be glad to send you information in writing where, where you could actually see this in books. But the word Lord, according to Unger's Bible Dictionary, and we'll send you a copy of it. We'll see it, send you a free booklet. Uh, I'll put you on the mailing list for the Prophetic Word magazine, which keeps you up to date on prophecy. But I'll send you a free booklet showing who is Lord God, who is Baal. Yahweh was never identified as a God in the Holy Scripture. It was the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, under the Pope Constantine, Pope Constantine, who actually, who actually removed the name from all translations, all versions of the book of Yahweh, and it was a death penalty to even pronounce the name Yahweh. Of course, they persecuted the prophets for using the name Yahweh, because Yahweh is not a god. Yahweh is the creator. The word God, is it means one who lifts himself up above his fellow men, who, who lifts himself up. Dominion is the word for God. <laughs> it wants to dominate. Yahweh allows, he's, he's never restricted mankind. In fact, when mankind rejected him and his laws, he said, okay, I'll back off from you, let you go your own way, but I'll warn you as what your end is going to be. Now, Yahweh created mankind in order to create beings like himself. This is Genesis 1.26. Yahweh created man in, in his own image, in his own likeness. That's what he is doing at this time. 
in one in Genesis one twenty six, he says, Then Yahweh said, I will make man in my image according to my likeness, and I will give him authority. Uh, Psalms 8, you might write that down and read the whole chapter. Psalms 8, 1 through 8 shows that Yahweh intends to put, give mankind those who will choose righteousness. Those who will not choose righteousness, Yahweh shows he will, he will not give them life even. I mean, they're going to die. He will not resurrect them. But also, those who will accept him, those who will accept righteousness as their guide and live by total righteousness, Yahweh shows that he is going to give them authority over the entire universe to teach and to guide he, uh, the, the universe into total righteousness, peace, joy, and love, because that's what Yahweh's laws of righteousness bring when kept. In, in Micah 4, 1 through, 1 through 3, he says he is going to establish his house in the last days. Now, life was cut off here in Genesis 3. You've got to understand this. Because Satan introduced God worship, which has deceived the whole world. Yes, God worship. Yahweh is never a God. Yahweh was the creator. He doesn't need to lift himself up above others. He created everything. But the gods, they went to promoting themselves in evil. And Satan promoted them. Look here in Genesis. It shows you this in the very beginning. Here's where the deception started taking place. Yahweh created mankind. He put him in a, in a, a garden-like uh, uh, atmosphere, the Garden of Eden, very uh, voluptuous living, and he put before him two trees. One of them was the tree of life. The tree of life found there in, in Genesis 2, the tree of life. But he also allowed in that same atmosphere, he also allowed the tree of the knowledge of righteousness and evil. Well, the tree of life, he says, in, in verse 17, he said, but don't partake of this tree of a mixture of knowledge and of righteousness and evil, or you will die. Dying, you will die. Okay, Satan comes in verse 3, and we see here how Satan teaches Eve against what Yahweh said, against Yahweh's instruction. And in verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for he knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be open, and you will be as gods. You will be as gods. A God is one, as is shown now in Isaiah 14, God, the word God, is shown to be one who lifts herself up above others, and actually through her dominion causes wars and fighting because she teaches others to be evil like the gods. Most people never see this in verse 5. Look at this in verse 5. For he knows that in the days you eat thereof, your eyes will be open, and you will be as gods, knowing Evil, knowing evil, do you see that? You will be as gods, you will be practicing evil. One of the laws that mankind is really having trouble with is the sexual laws that guide you into perfect moral character. He says, don't commit fornication. Well, when you see your daughter or your son 
doing this and you know that he's practicing this, you can rest assured that others are practicing it with those same two. And of course this is what's going on in the schools, in the workplaces, where women work, where men work together. We're having big time trouble with it. Some women are saying that they, they come in forward and saying, well, they've been molested. You've only seen a, a small portion of this. Most women would not belittle themselves to let it be known that this occurred to them, especially married women. You know, they would not let it be known. Those who the husband finds out about winds up many times in murder. But this is going on constantly in the workplaces. They have mixed the men and the women together. So it's going on constantly. It has been going on since the 40s. When television came out, television from Hollywood, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, was able to start teaching men and women how to live in their own homes. They taught them in their own homes. This brought the Catholic religion of God worship. The word Catholic means universal. That means they worship all gods. They're universal. Coptic Catholic. Coptic means Egyptian. Catholic means universal. The Coptic Catholic is where the Roman Catholic came from, Egypt. This religion from Egypt sits on the seven hills of Rome. It uh, is also sprinkled throughout the earth, big time in America. This is how they got sodomy into the classrooms, into the law, and says it's legal. The Supreme Court is the majority rule, the Supreme Court is made up the majority of Catholics, of course. This is how they got this law passed saying sodomy is okay. Your Bible doesn't say that. Read Leviticus 18. Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And you will see the law against guiding the people, telling the people, don't commit sodomy or you will cause diseases that will confuse the mind and you will wind up in wars and fighting, as Cain did in chapter 4 here of, of Genesis. Well, notice this word. You want your sons and daughters to be evil? Is that what you want? That's what the gods are. Satan said, don't practice the laws of Yahweh. The laws were given to Adam and Eve. Satan says, if you don't practice them, it's more desirable. He, she shows this right here in Genesis 3, 1 through 5. She says it's more desirable. Speaking of fornication, adultery, bestiality, and sodomy. Yes, sexual desires. They're very strong. These things were resisted by Yasuf in Egypt. Yasuf was put in with the king, the king's wife, working daily with her, and of course taking care of her, and the queen actually tried to commit adultery with Yasuf. Yasuf ran, left the place. He had been trained in the laws of Yahweh, and he took those laws seriously. Very few people do that today because the Catholic Church criticizes the laws of Yahweh. They pretend they're following the Bible, but they're far from following the Bible. In fact, the the uh, Christians that follow, they're, they're called daughters of the Catholic Church, they do not follow the Bible either. <laughs> they don't follow the, the laws of the Holy Scripture. 
Well, this is the world we stand in today. The Savior said, if you will turn there, the Savior said, and remember, don't obey Yahweh, obey the obey Satan, be evil like the gods. Well, that's what the world is today. And of course, uh, they, they're all wanting to be gods, and they instead of being like Yahweh. Well, Yahweh does not force anyone to keep his law. He says, if you do, then I'll give you eternal life, and I'll give you a place in the kingdom. That's what you were made for. That's what mankind was made for and put on earth. And, and given a, uh, a certain amount of time to live, to prove whether he would accept Yahweh's righteousness, whether he would be strong and follow righteousness, or he would follow Satan, the serpent, and be like evil, like the gods. That's exactly the test that is put before you. And that's what's shown in Exodus, when Yahweh actually brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he gave them his laws, and then he tested them, for 40 years. And those who accepted him, he gave the authority to become the sons of Yahweh. They're not the sons of Yahweh yet, but they proved themselves and he gave them authority to become the sons of Yahweh. They will be resurrected in the first resurrection that is right after this great tribulation that we're in right now. This great tribulation is going to turn to nuclear very, very soon. And the sun will be darkened. The earth is going to be burned in one hour. Now that's got to be with nuclear bombs. And the intelligence tells us that once this war starts, they're going to have all out an all-out war trying to dispense of their enemies, all the nuclear nations, is going to try to dispense of all the others. Well, that means everyone. And the, and the ones in intelligence, in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, they're saying there's not, not going to be any winners in this war that is coming. And they know that it's coming. And everyone is telling the governments, our governments, no, this route that you're taking, it's going to end in nuclear war. We're going to have nuclear war. Well, now, remember Revelations 12, 9. He said, the whole world is deceived. Satan deceives the whole world. Into what? Into God worship. <laughs> Instead of worshiping Yahweh, they worship gods. And, and let me read you this right here, and write it down, please, and read it later. But in, in Deuteronomy 30, and Yahweh told Moshe this, it was written down, he says, Deuteronomy 30, please write this down and read it. See, I have set before you life by righteousness and death and destruction. I have allowed you to choose whichever way you want to go. You will have life by righteousness. Verse 15, I've set before you life by righteousness. But, verse 17, But if your hearts turn away, and you are not obedient, and you are drawn away to worship gods, to worship them by serving them, that's what worship is, it's serving. Romans 6.16 said, do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves as servants to obey, his servants you are, to whom you obey, whether of sin, sin is the breaking of Yahweh's law, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads you to righteousness. Those are the ones that, that Yahweh says are going to be given eternal life, given eternal life, and they will reign with him. He's going to give them authority over all the universe. That's in Psalms 8. 
Please write these down. If you didn't get them written down, call the house of Yahweh. We're here to serve. Email us. We'll send these to you absolutely free. But Yahweh says in Deuteronomy now 30, I set before you life and death, but you're the one that has to choose. If you go after the gods to worship them by serving them, I declare to you, verse 18, this is Deuteronomy 30, verse 18, I declare to you this day that you will surely perish. You will perish. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose. Therefore choose life. It's you that must choose. Yahweh is not going to force you. He's not, he's not a dominator. He is a leader. He's a guider. He, he, he gave mankind his laws and he says, you choose righteousness and I will give you eternal life in my kingdom. Well, of course, the Vatican is uh, sending out the Pope to tell you that salvation is free, not a pay to save, deal with God. Now, he knows the Catholic Church, they just admitted that they removed the name Yahweh from the Holy Scriptures. The versions, such as the King James Version, they know his name is not God, the word God means a dominator, as is shown in Isaiah 14. 14, it means a dominator, where they will force you, as the Catholic Church forces you, to teach God worship in all the schools of America. Yes, they're forced, but they're not allowed to teach the Ten Commandments. They're allowed to teach God religion, but they're not allowed to teach Yahweh's righteousness. Yeah, the Catholic Church is that strong. And if you go against the Catholic Church, you're going to wind up like Roy Moore, the, the man that just lost his political race. He put t the Ten Commandments in front of the courthouse for all to see. That was his that was his number one mistake with the Catholic Church. He also denounced sodomy. So they took him out. They have that power. I don't know if you read the book, The Keys of This Blood, by Malachi Martin, their, their writer, but he shows how strong the Catholic Church is and how it has its tentacles in every nation. Like the Supreme Court of America is dominated by Catholics, the majority. So they can get all the, the Vatican's views enforced through their Supreme Court here in America. All the, all the municipal courts is actually run by the laws passed by the Catholic Church, the Vatican. You know what the word Vatican means? If you Google the word Vatican, it will show you it means the divining serpent. Get your request in now to the house of Yahweh. Get your request in. In the last days, Micaiah, that's Micah in the King James Version. Also, Isaiah 2, verse 2. Micah 4, verses 1 through 3. In the last days, I will establish my house. That means it wasn't here. In the last days means the last generation. The last generation started in 1934 with the computer, the nuclear bomb, and my birth. Yes, I was born in 1934. I am Yahweh's last day's witness. My brother was one. I was the last born of the two brothers shown in Isaiah 44. Read it. Yahweh gives us our names. There are a lot of scriptures that shows the two witnesses work in these last days. I was the last born of the two brothers of Isaiah 44. Until next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding.